picture this, you're all set up to record your latest episodes, you've got all the right tech, and then suddenly you're bombarded with outside noises, honking cars, barking dogs, sirens, um, someone dropping something loud in the street or in the building. And that's not exactly the vibe you're going for, for. And I've been through all of those. And that was never the vibe I was going for. It's one thing if you really want your podcast to be a casual, chill, like, you know, there's sirens in the world. So what? On we go with life. But it really depends on what you're going for, what's your vibe, what's your brand. And if you're looking to have a world-class podcast, if you're looking to make a world-class impression, it takes more time, it takes a little more effort, and mostly just some conscientiousness around how you have your setup and where you're taping. Welcome to Launch It, the podcast maestro, your gateway to becoming a thought leader in your field. Dive into the world of elite podcasting and master the art of influence and inspiration. And now, podcast personality, award-winning author and actress, Anne Scotland. Welcome, welcome back, change makers, experts in your own area. Welcome to another episode of Launch It, the podcast maestro. And I'm Anne Scotland, the podcast maestro. I'm here to bring you some podcasting advice today, some inspiration to get you off to a great start or to take your podcast to the next level. Um, I believe that having a world-class podcast can really make you an expert in your field. And so I'm giving you so many tips and tools that I have learned and gained the hard way. And today I'm diving into the world of audio mics. Ooh, that's what everyone's always like, the mic, how do I pick a mic? Well, your voice deserves to really have that clarity and authority of a maestro conducting a symphony, right? Um, but that's not always the case. Have you ever listened to a podcast that sounded like it was recorded in a tin can? Or, or worse, um, where the host sounded like they were talking through a sock. You know, <laughs> it's so frustrating. Whether you, regardless of where or how you're listening to it, you're like, I really want to hear what they're talking about, but I just can't stand it. It's so annoying. So that's why I'm here to help underscore the importance of quality sound and how it can make or break your podcasting journey. It really can. But first of all, let's chat about the importance of finding the perfect podcast recording location. So picture this, you're all set up to record your latest episodes, you've got all the right tech, and then suddenly you're bombarded with outside noises, honking cars, barking dogs, sirens, um, someone dropping something loud in the street or in the building. And that's not exactly the vibe you're going for, for. And I've been through all of those. And that was never the vibe I was going for. It's one thing if you really want your podcast to be a casual, chill, like, you know, there's sirens in the world. So what? On we go with life. But it really depends on what you're going for, what's your vibe, what's your brand. And if you're looking to have a world-class podcast, if you're looking to make a world-class impression, it takes more time, it takes a little more effort, and mostly just some conscientiousness around how you have your setup and where you're taping. So that is a no-brainer that you want to find a quiet, as much as possible, echo-free space to really get that crystal clear sound, um, which is easier said than done because I've recorded in a wide variety of different places and spaces. And just when you think you've got it set, something else happens. Um, one of my favorite places to record, especially if it's audio only, is walk-in closets. If you're not a voiceover professional, you probably already know that that's a great secret because it's a closed space. It's usually on inside walls. It has no windows. It has a door. And you're surrounded by insulation with of clothes, shoes, whatever. Absolutely fabulous, especially if it's carpeted, right? Um, a spare room without windows can be really useful. But it depends on what. Is it just a concrete slab? Because if that's the... If that's the case, you probably need to add floor or wall or ceiling insulation. Um, I had a guest um, on my podcast who we set everything up in advance. We did a tech check, which is something I highly recommend that you do before the show, usually even a day or two before the show. Um, and everything seemed fine. And I just assumed, because I didn't clarify, that this guest was going to tape in the same location that we had tested. And it turns out, they sat down for a live show to tape in a coffee shop 
an actual coffee shop with people coming and going and like a bell on the door and people shouting out names on the coffee and this really, really disruptive music in the background. And we were talking on a fairly serious subject and it was just unbearable. And I had to cut the whole episode short because I'm like, I can't, I can't force people to listen to that. That's not what they're tuning in for. So I changed a lot of my own habits around that because like that is not what I was looking for in a world-class podcast. Now, if I was just chilling on a park bench podcasting and she's chilling in a cafe and that's just our, our modus operandi, then we'll just do it, right? But um, yeah, that wasn't what I'm really going for. So if you do have a compromised recording environment, choosing an excellent mic is even more important. So let's talk about mics. You've, you've heard that story about the corp, corporate podcasting guy who lost his job because on the show he was talking about the CEO of the company and he said, uh, whatever her name was, Melinda is a tremendous asset, but he was podcasting from his car on his earbuds and no one heard the et on the end of asset. Melinda is a tremendous asset. <laughs> So your sound really does matter. The quality of your taping environment and your microphone is a huge difference. And we're going to talk about more about what you do when, as we go on in this show, when you have alternate environments, environments that aren't ideal, but temporary, that how you can still come up with some quick, quick tricks to make it work as, as well as possible. So let's talk with so many different mics. This is like the number one question I get asked about podcasts, or especially by people who are re getting ready to start a podcast, what mic do I use? There's so many. There's so many different kinds. There's there's overhead mics on arms. There's lav mics. There's desktop mics. There are so, so many to choose from. But the real question is, what's right for you? What's right for your podcast? If you were on uh, the last, listening to the last show, watching the last show, we talked about whether you should pick an audio or video podcast for your personality, your branding, your vibe, and where your audience is when they're consuming your podcast. So all of these have a, an effect on which mic you want to choose. And it really depends on your personal preferences for your recording setup, right? So overhead mics are great for creating that classic radio announcer vibe. You know, they're hanging kind of right here and it just looks like the radio station. Uh, lav mics offer a lot of flexibility because if you do have a podcast that is on the go, outside, always changing location, um, that is a really good way to go. Another really good use for lav mics, of course, and coming from the film industry myself, is uh, when you're going for a TV fill. I'm not using a lav mic today, but uh, this would be a good example of when you could use one. And if just if you happen to not know what a lav mic is, it's just those little clip mics you see sometimes on news anchors or other people. It's either on your lapel or under your clothes just a little bit. Um, and usually you can get really great sound. And let's not forget about desktop mics, which are perfect, really, in my opinion, for home studios. They provide excellent sound quality in most cases. So we're going to talk about all of these today, um, at least is in regard to uh, desktop mics and arm mics, lav mics, that might be for a different time. That's usually for a more advanced podcaster anyway, uh, if you're getting to those specifics. Um, so mics are different. They're different in so many ways in how they pick up sound and how they convert sound and what they cost. Uh, so many different kinds. So the super pro mics start at about $1,000. That's pretty steep, depending on if this is something you plan to do for a long time. It also just depends on your budget, though. If you have that budget, then you want to just have the silky, smooth, perfect voice. Then you probably want to jump into something like the uh, Sennheiser MKH416. That's really the gold standard in broadcast quality mics. It's really guaranteed to just make you sound like a million dollars but it does cost about a thousand dollars and up depending on how many trimmings you want, right? Well, um, these, this list I'm giving you, and I jumped ahead of myself because I was just getting excited about pro mics. Um, I'm going to give you my top five picks for podcasting mics um, that will really give you good sound, but which are very dependent on the setup you have, right? So the, the thousand dollar mics, in most cases, your setup still matters, your environment that you're taping still matters, but you're going to have 
pretty fantastic sound. Uh, one of my good friends from Hollywood is a full-time professional voiceover artist. And no matter where she goes or travels or when she comes to stay at my house, she brings her thousand dollar bike and she tapes in my um, walk-in closet. <laughs> so you can see, and this is someone who has over 500 or 600 voice credits, video game credits. Like this is a full-time professional in voiceover. So that's what's happening. Um, now, those may have been for auditions, not final production when she goes to the actual um, lot studios, but that is how she can get a good enough sound for what she needs to do. So let's kind of go down the line here with Mike. So then the number two, two, and you can write these down. I'll mention them again at the end. Um, we already got the Sennheiser MKH416. That's S-E-N-N -N, if you're listening and not watching, H-E-I-S-E-R or you can just rewatch this later. Um, the next one I want to share with you is the, the Shure mic. It's S-H-U-R-E, Shure mic, SM7B. So this is a real favorite among podcasters because it has a very warm, natural sound, and it's very versatile. Um, it, it's really one of the most popular dynamic microphones. Uh, it was originally designed specifically for professional broadcasters and voiceover work. You can get it on an arm. You can get it on a stand. It's a fantastic mic, and it costs about $400. Uh, and again, that's the Shure S-H-U-R-E SM7B. Uh, so these are, we stopped with super premium and then next level down. And obviously there's hundreds of mics, but I'm giving you five that we as podcasters um, are often most likely to use or very likely to use. Um, and then I'm going to talk to you, the next three I'm going to share with you are mics I'm extremely familiar with. So number three is the Audio-Technica, and that's the AT2020, Audio-Technica AT2020. This is a really budget-friendly but high-quality mic. This was great for beginners um, who are kind of dipping their toes into podcasting. In fact, it's one of the mics I used early on as well. Also, you can get it on a stand, you can use it on an arm. Um, which many mics, you can do both. So it's just very versatile that way. Uh, it has really good quality. And I used one for a couple years. Oh, the cost. Cost is about $100 to $200. So pretty affordable. Um, not bad at all for a good, a quality mic. So as I said, yeah, I used them for a couple of years. But the main issue was it is with it, I just have tongue twisters all day today. The main issue was that it's a directional mic. So it features a, a cardioid polar pattern. And what that means is basically it picks up sound primarily from the front. So if you think of an old fashioned mic where you see, you know, people singing or speaking directly into the top of the microphone, that is the kind of mic it is. So if you speak directly into it, you're gonna get really good quality. And the, uh, you know, the AT2020 is really good for that reason, because it's cutting out the background noise. The Audio-Technica AT2020 is really cutting out the background noise around you. So for a lot of beginning podcasters or anyone who's just trying to up their game and get a, a, a good solid mic, it's a great mic, but it has to work with your setup. And it didn't work with mine. I used it, as I said, for a couple of years. The problem was that I don't usually go for producing my own radio style look show. I like more of a TV style look show. And because of that, I didn't really want the arm mic hanging down from the top. And I didn't want it on a stand right in front of my mouth here in the picture. I wanted an off screen mic look, right? So because of that, what would happen, even though I bought this really good mic, uh, was that I wasn't speaking directly into the top. If I hung it above me, I was kind of speaking into the below but to the side. And if I had it below me, um, the only way for me to speak directly into the top would be like to lean over like this and, and, and talk into it, which, you know, then you can't see my face. So if I'm looking for, uh, if I'm looking for that professional sound, um, you're not going to get it. So what I ended up getting was a really tinny sound because it was picking up my voice from those outer edges and actually kind of trying to filter it out, if you will, as opposed to highlight it. So that was a real problem. Great mic, but for me, the Audio-Technica, the AT2020 was not a good choice. So one of the good things about trying and failing with some of these mics was I really got to learn why exactly they worked the way they did. I wasn't a mic expert. I could have spent months 
doing the research. I didn't. I just went with people's advice one mic at a time. So I basically ended up learning the hard way in that they were like, oh, that's a great mic. You should get it. But they didn't know anything about my setup. Uh, so here's another fabulous mic that I used for a while. The Rode mic, Rode NT1A. That's R-O-D-E, Rode NT1A. It's a classic large diaphragm, true condenser mic. And it's really famous for its low self noise, for its crisp sound. It's really good for professional podcasters. And even better, it only costs about $159 and up, depending on what model you get. So it's a really good value as well. Absolutely um, a fabulous mic. My issue at this time with this mic was my recording setup. I was recording in a home studio. It had wood floors. I did put a rug down, but that didn't fix everything. Uh, it had wood floors that echoed when anything else in another room happened or fell or footsteps. And then, of course, regular walls and ceilings. It wasn't um, soundproofed in any particular way. So I had a lot of echo issues. And because condenser microphones like the NT1A are really sensitive, they can pick they give you good quality if it's purely silent, but they can pick up more of those room echoes, the reverberation than a, a dynamic microphone. So I had to move away from those. And again, it was really, it wasn't the mic, it was my setup. I just didn't have the right space. I did get uh, a giant insulation, um, like a drape, but a very thick pad for my, my entire door. The problem was I was renting at the time and they were very strict about modifying anything or gluing anything to the walls. If it had been my own room, my own place, I would have just soundproofed it. So that's when you see pictures of podcasters or other producers with all the foam, the gray foam on all their walls, um, even their ceilings, sometimes even the floor or a soundproofing carpet on the floor. You can really make that space work for you. But if you don't have the freedom to dramatically change the space you're in, then you have to find a different mic. And that's just what you have to figure out as you go. So a quick review of the four mics I'm talking about today, the Sennheiser MKH416. That's the premium go-to if you got the money, spend it. Thousand dollar mic really can work wonders no matter where you are. Although it doesn't guarantee everything, it's a really sure bet. Then the next one is actually the Shure, S-H-U-R-E, SM7B a really good mic for podcasters um, and designed for professional broadcasters, but still about $400. And then the Audio-Technica, I guess I'm actually reviewing five. I don't know why I said four. The Audio-Technica AT2020, and that's the one I used, um, but realized that it wasn't the right mic for me because it's a directional mic. And um, I was ending up speaking into it or was picking up the sound from the sides and giving me this really tinny quality because it was trying to filter me out. And then the fourth one, the one we just talked about, the Rode NT1A, uh, that classic large diaphragm, true condenser mic, again, an excellent mic, but the problem was it picked up too much background noise. Um, and it really needed a more quiet environment, at least in the setup I had. So now we come to number five, save the best for last. Well, my best, my favorite anyway, which is the Blue Yeti. And this is a really popular choice because it's so plug and play. And that's actually what I'm using today is the Blue Yeti. If you know anything about microphones, you know how popular this is. It's portable. It's easy. I'm going to let you have a quick peek right there. There's the mic. And here is the pop filter. So a pop filter is, if you don't know, a pop filter is the screen that keeps you from giving that sound in the mic. You know, in high school when someone was blowing into the mic on, on the front stage or the principal was saying, you know, if he was to say the word pop, 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 and you hear that, that's what a pop filter is for. Again, if you already know all about mics, this is not necessarily what you need to know today, but this is Mic 101, so I figured you got to say everything, give people the full spectrum of understanding how the mic works. So again, I love this mic, and you're getting a sample of the quality right now of the Blue Yeti, and it's really popular for a large variety of reasons, um, which again, I think is one of the things that makes it such a great mic. Um, it's very versatile in its polar patterns. Now, what that means is it features multiple polar patterns. These are cardioid, bidirectional, omnidirectional, stereo. 
basically it's making it versatile for all kinds of different recording situations, whether it's a solo podcast or interviews or conference calls or music recordings even. Um, it, it is just extraordinarily versatile. It's easy to use. You literally, it's just plugged into my computer. Now I will say that my computer, which is the camera I'm using today, uh, I'm using a Mac today, um, the Yeti I got was the USB plug, and um, I had to get a, con a converter for that to um, to the C plug so that it would go into this current newer version of, uh, of a Mac. So also know that just because you buy it, it may not plug straight into your computer. So be sure you check out the ports um, and see if you need a, a dongle, an adapter, to, and you know something you can easily pick up at any electronic store. You can buy it on Amazon for like eight dollars and have it delivered the next day. So not bad at all. Um, so it's easy. You just plug it in. It has its own onboard controls, uh, which I often rarely even use because I usually don't use headphones. Again, looking for that more of that TV vibe. Uh, but it has controls for your headphone volume, your pattern selection. It has an instant mute button, which is really nice if like someone interrupts you for a second. And so many other little tiny adjustments just built into the mic itself. So what I love about it is you don't have to be a sound expert to understand and use um, the Blue Yeti. Uh, it has a built-in headphone jack or USB and on and on. I could just keep telling you more, but for the price, it really provides really good sound quality and it can be a significant upgrade even from, from all your built-in computer mics or the lower end audio equipment. I hate built-in computer mics. That is one of my pet peeves. When I'm going to have someone who's coming on as a co-host or anyone who's gone with me, going to be on the show with me regularly, they have to have a, a separate mic. You cannot use your earphones from your phone. You cannot use your ear pods. You cannot use uh, your computer mic. It's great for Zoom calls. It's great for conference calls when, you know, the recording quality isn't at stake. But if you're trying to become, uh, if you're trying to become a leader in your field, if you want to be a thought leader, if you want to be respected by having a world-class podcast, you have to have some good, solid sound. Again, the cost on the Blue Yeti is the best part of all because it starts at $99 and really goes up to like $199, um, depending on the options you prefer. It's pretty shocking that you can get this good of a piece of equipment for that price. Um, you can get the pop filler, filter that comes with it. And it really looks cool. It just has that old fashioned uh, microphone look that is kind of trendy and, and a little bit retro. So there you go. So whether you're recording in a state-of-the-art studio and you're lucky to have that, or you're in a makeshift closet booth, <laughs> uh, remember that the quality of the sound is really the key to capturing your audience attention and keeping them there and keeping them coming back for more, as opposed to that tin can sound, as opposed to super echo, as opposed to someone talking through a sock sound. To find your perfect podcaster voice, you need to really find the mic that works for you and with your setup. And that's really how you find your podcasting magic. And as always, if you're ready to take your podcast to the next level, reach out to me. I'm here to support you every step of the way on your journey to podcasting, um, whether you are looking for free tips and pointers here on the show, whether you're looking for consulting, whether you're looking for full production, editing, distribution, uh, this is the place to come. If you want to be a thought leader in your field, let's give you a world-class podcast and make you great. So change makers, experts in your own field, until next time, here's to world-class podcasting and making you a thought leader in your field. I'm Ann Scotland. Check out the mics and send me your messages. I would love to hear from you. The email is streaming. You can also go to my website, annscotland.com. Uh, send me your questions or comments and suggestions for topics you'd love to see on the show. And I can't wait to have you here next time. See you then.